Hello and welcome to Let's Play In The Space 2, Series 8, Episode number 54. I'm JC Proton and we are picking up at turn 124. We are playing a standard faction of the Unfallen on endless difficulty in a normal speed game. In this episode, we are going to continue our conflict with the Cravers. We're going to be uh, finishing off the remnants of this fleet here at Wii. Uh, we're going to be invading the system at Sirma. We are sieging down Jem, 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 and Rasan. Uh, after we take Sirma, we'll move fleet up to Jovanus. So next turn will be so this turn we're invading Sirma. Next turn we'll invade Jovanus and Jem, Jem. And uh, then we'll be sieging down, finish sieging Rassam, and we'll hit Rhea, and we'll be moving siege into Thea. So, yeah, it's like Dominos. We're just going to be rocking through several of these systems over the next few turns. <clears throat> um, we have a vi this Vine Fleet's going to be heading up this way, I believe. Let's see, let's let's move these overwatches up first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give us a little more visibility as to what's going on at Rhea. Okay, there's nothing guarding there. So I'll go ahead and move these vines up this way. And we'll move this overwatch up to Jahim. Alright, there's a nice uh, Lumeris fleet there. 4,000... 3,000, okay. So the numbers look big, but the attack power is not that big. So Lumeris are actually pretty weak, it looks like. Okay, um, we have a vine fleet over here, don't we? Yeah, we do. So we'll move that into position here. I don't think it can entwine, though. I think we're out of range. Yeah, cannot entwine yet. Uh, not till we capture this system. So that'll be next turn. Okay, so let's get started. This fleet is slow, so it hasn't arrived yet. We have a fleet of thorns. It's all thorns uh, waiting to receive them with their thorny embrace. <laughs> I did move one thorn ship over here and uh, dealt with that. Uh, pupa ship that was sitting here uh, this fine fleet here made it out and we're going to start entwining <clears throat> so they'll entwine here at HR 5056 complete that in one turn and then move over to Nerod and then entwine it next turn uh, let's see here do we have anything we can hunt any any pickings we got here it's pretty slim pickings is what it is. Well, there's one over here at Iris, 04395. So we'll go ahead and take that out. There's not a lot. There's not a lot. Cravers are up against the ropes, man. <clears throat> They're up against the ropes. All right, so let's take a shot at these guys. Let's see. There's a pupa ship and a damaged slicer butcher butcher. So we're going to smoke these dudes. In fact, let's just go ahead and add these thorns into the fleet. <clears throat> uh, that was not the right ship to be declaring the battle. <laughs> Whoopsie. I need to be paying more attention than that. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, he's going to retreat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoops. That's the fleet I meant to attack with. And yes, I suppose we'll do repair and recover. I don't think it's really necessary, but 
I suppose. Sure. Let's see. I'm curious to see if having the <clears throat> the hero ship counts as having ships in that lane for the purpose of getting um, the bonus. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm having a hard time tonight. I think this episode is going to be uh, kind of short. It's going to be kind of a quick and dirty episode here. We're just going to kind of rock through it. Top Gun style. High speed, low drag. We're just going to go zoom, zoom, zoom. Boom, boom, boom. It says... Plus 10% and 5. So it only counts one of them. Oh, I mean, it's two lanes versus three lanes, so it does count it. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to see the numbers on that real quick. Yeah, barely any damage. Railgun and mostly critical hit with their laser weapons. They oh they were using get lucky. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, and let's see, we had nine hundred dust. We had our retreat. <clears throat> Here's debris. Encounter remains. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> huh. Wow. There's a little random event popped. You get 50 titanium. This is a good one, man. <clears throat> Especially earlier in the game. And these guys aren't very tough, if I remember right. 39, 39. Yeah, I mean, like, you can handle them early in the game. Uh, I don't think we're going to watch that one, because we know how that one ends. <clears throat> Cool. All right, I'll uh, I'll end up moving that fleet somewhere. Uh, not sure where I'm going to move it at this point. Um, like I don't think those guys even did any damage, right? Yeah, four points of damage. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we completed that. Got 50 titanium. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, off, off, off camera, I had purchased... Uh, last turn, I bought some Orichalcix and Quadranix. This turn, I bought some Adamantian. Um, just buying while stuff's cheap. Even for the likes of you, the Hive has an offer. Wow, okay, so they want to give me uh, Ionic Crystal for a truce. 210 Ionic Crystal. Hmm, what's that worth? If I were to sell Ionic Crystals, one of them is 478. 200, 
10. At face value, that's 100,000 dust. Um, actually, selling that many, you probably get more like 80. <clears throat> it's the best they can offer. Um, I might take them up on it just for like... <clears throat> Since we're just rolling through them, um, I think I might do the whole dishonest uh, negotiating in bad faith and just take their resources, give them a truce from the time I end this turn until the time I start next turn and then just declare war again. <coughs> Excuse me. Might do that. So it buys them a little bit of time, but not very much. Um, I might do that. Uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and invade at Sirma. And we'll just go ahead and blitz it down. Probably didn't need to blitz it, but, you know, whatever. I'm being a little heavy-handed here. is not worth much so we'll just occupy it let's take a look totally depleted lots of stuff here lots of good stuff blew up four structures Nothing too bad. Okay, got some more de Deuvians. So that's cool. Alright, um, quest. Alright, so we, we, uh, we did the Cephalopod Envy. Uh, we decided to go with the, um, <clears throat> with the Pacifist option. So that gives us plus two approval on all of our main population for the next 20 turns. So we have extra approval happening. <clears throat> Not that we need it, but, you know, we, we, we have it. Okay, and uh, on this one we had... Uh, we were either going for being uh, the quest reward was uh, if we if we took a toxic if we capture a toxic planet then we would be able to turn hot planets into forests or the other option was to reach the fourth stage in any one of the in one of the quadrants of the technology tree and we would get fire forming which does enabling direct forming of barren arctic or snow into forest so um i went through so we, we completed that quest and i went through already i went through the build queues um and uh adjusted so like this snow is now going uh the snow is, is five so it's going straight to forest from snow normally you would go from snow to boreal, and then from boreal, you could go to forest. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, already took care of that. Got that done off camera. Uh, we're close to getting another hero. We're at 95%. Looks like the highest chance is we're going to get an overseer. So that'll be great. See that guy leveled up. This guy is 
is a governor. Okay, so we'll go with We lost some population on our newer systems. <clears throat> uh, these are the populations that grew. These are the things that we built. Uh, you see we have some thorns, some selling ships. Uh, you can see those... I've uh, got started now building level three modernizations. Uh, some of these are switching over into building selling ships, this biofuel factory, a little bit more terraforming happening still. So that's what we have being built. Our uh, build queues look like this. So you see all that uh, emergency AI, uh, urgent AI research stuff. I've stopped all that, and I'm now doing, you see, a lot of modernization upgrades. I'm really cranking it. Um, cranking pretty hard on that, and you can see my resource stacks are way lower than they were before. Um, so... <clears throat> The, uh, the rate at which I'm acquiring, uh, see, I need to increase my deciduous trees. I don't have a big pile, and the rate that I'm growing is, is way lower. It's 113 of the transvine versus I'm only growing 76 deciduous trees, and I've got a stockpile of the transvine, so I can really drop the transvine production. So I need more of that, and you see I have a stockpile of the dust water, so I need to increase my protospore production. <clears throat> so I want to look at that. Um, so I was interested in maybe getting Ugaro, but to do that it needs to be out of the influence radius of Canis. So I'd have to take Canis. So I had tried to do that over here at Kerr, and I had taken this Bill Gelly system, but you can see Kerr is still not colonizable. It's unavailable. So I'm not able to do any colonizations there, even though I have it entwined. Um, and it looks to me like this green influence is not yet across the star at Kerr. So I'm not exactly sure why I'm not able to colonize there, but for whatever reason, I'm not. So because that didn't work out there, then that makes me hesitant to try it here with Canis and Ugaro. So I think what I'm going to do, I have enough influence, I can do one Pacific conversion. And I think the one I want to do is this one here at Tylus because of that protospore. And it's on a trade route, so all the better. So let's go ahead and do Pacific conversion on Tylus. Boom. We'll take a look at that system. Pretty nicely developed. Ooh, what's this? Nano cuisine plant. Hmm. Cool. That's uh, some. <coughs> that's something I don't see very often. Um, okay, so we got Tylus now. So I'll play around with updating his build cues off camera. Um, we completed research on power of the endless. So that gives us plus 20 approval on all our systems and plus one FIDSI per population on all of our planets where our population are ecstatic, which is everywhere, just about everywhere except our very newest systems. Just the newest systems are not. Uh, ecstatic. Everyone else is super happy. And you see we're up to 49 star systems now. And let's see how many how many uh, curiosities have we explored? 495. 
495. So all of our systems get a plus 495 um, in, uh, industry from Thinkers and Tinkers 1. Because we got that early on in the game. Um, that was really nice. Um, research. I went ahead and queued up everything. So we've got about nine turns left to go. Um, currently working on this one here. Uh, that's going to give us... Uh, if we put our industry into this emergency labor policy, 50% of the industry is converted into dust. So that will give me the ability to really crank up my dust production. Because if you look at the amount of industry I have, uh, it's thousands and thousands of industry. So you think add all that up and cut it in half, and that's the amount of extra dust we'll have. So we'll we'll have our dust production will increase dramatically. So that'll be cool. Um, and then after that, we're doing uh, these two, which are going to increase our ground troops health and damage so you see we're getting to where we're going to be completing a lot of these each like several per turn at this point and we'll have completed the whole tech tree in about nine or ten turns um solar nebula is now supporting coyacil which we just finished entwining. Okay, so we're gonna, we're entwining here, and we have a vine fleet headed up here, and a vine fleet here waiting on standby to start entwining Timos. Um, let's see here, we got Serma. So let's, See, there were some siege ships here. Okay. Yeah, these siege ships needed to go into the fleet to be able to make it. Fleet goes up here. Um, the siege ships come out. That is a combat fleet. Okay, and then from Sirma, the siege fleet comes up here as well. <clears throat> and these siege ships also join in the fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now this has us down at, yeah, ready to invade Yovanus. Next turn, ready to invade Jayam next turn. And Rassam will be halfway down. Or most of the way down. Alright. Except that we're probably going to accept that truce. It's worth 100,000. I guess it's worth it. Let's just quickly check through our other ships. Okay, so I'll figure out what to do with that fleet. guys are just going to continue to wait here for this fleet to arrive and finish them off when they arrive next turn or not I guess because we're going to accept the uh, 
I guess we're going to accept the peace or the truce. Let's see what else we do really want to do. I don't think there's anything else. I don't want to accept the peace yet because when I accept the, uh, I mean the truce, when I accept the truce, then Cravers are going to have closed borders and it's going to prevent me from moving any fleets around. So I'm going to wait to do that. I'll do it off camera, I guess. Um, and that's why, uh, just because I want to get my fleets positioned where I want them to be. Um, and then I'll accept the truce. I'll ex get the, the resources and, um, the Ionic Crystals, and then I'll um, probably be declaring war again next turn. Uh, most likely, uh, I mean, I kind of am willing to do Pacific Conversion, but I, I don't really see a reason not to just keep pressing the advantage at this point. So I think I'm just going to continue to do that. Um, and I know that's just going to drive my military faction even higher. Um, these guys are, they're getting a lot of strength, but, um, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, right now there's a lot of fire going on between me and the, uh, Cravers, but you know, it's still light, man. It's still all peace and happiness and good feels over here. There's, there's some little grumpiness here. He's feeling sneaky, sneaky, friendly, insulted. And worried this is what my allies feel in my yeah and the cravers are worried uh, that I'm repeatedly crushing him <clears throat> all right folks I uh, guess we'll see you guys again in the uh, in the next video and thanks for watching